As millions of people are watching and over 11,000 athletes are competing in the Olympic Games, Japan inspires hope for the future in the COVID-stricken world. Still branded as Tokyo 2020, despite taking place in 2021, the competitions are held without spectators for the first time in the history of the Games. To discuss how the country is faring as a state of emergency is enforced in parts of Japan, Japanese ambassador to Kazakhstan, Mr. Jun Yamada, joins me today. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for joining and congratulations on hosting the current Olympic and the forthcoming Paralympic Games. Um, well, hosting the Olympic Games for any country is an enormous effort, but doing so during these unprecedented times is a tremendous responsibility for Japan, especially when the whole world is watching. Uh, what, and Japan is really proving that the sporting events can be made possible, can be held, if the correct safeguard measures are in place. Uh, what do you think some of the biggest challenges have been in preparation to host the Olympics? Uh, ten years ago, when uh, we put our candidacy for hosting the Games, uh, nobody would have uh, anticipated or foreseen uh, this extraordinary situation. Uh, but now we're in the middle of a pandemic, so we have to do our best to make it safer and, and still uh, very successful uh, against all the odds and uh, challenges. Uh, of course, initially, there, there was some uh, psychological kind of um, reservation or skepticism uh, in the society and in the country mm -hmm. because the figures have been uh, going up once again. Actually, technically, we are still in an in in emergency, mm -hmm. uh, not only Tokyo, but also some uh, other cities in Japan. But uh, in the end, this is a very serious and important international responsibility to host the games and uh, make it successful. So the, we put our efforts together and uh, decided to go ahead. And uh, now the, set, the stage has been set. Uh, but uh, the, uh, already during the opening, Kazakhstan made the, the, the big success. There's uh, the unanimity of opinion among our people that uh, like you won the gold medal for the <laughs> opening ceremony. Fascinating all the audience uh, with the beauty and sophistication oh, yes, of your team. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. The costumes. Congratulations. And yes, exactly. Uh, um, yes, absolutely. The opening ceremony has been a mesmerizing event. That, however, this is the first Olympics that is held without these spectators. Now, many Olympic athletes um, are reporting that they're struggling to compete in empty arenas devoid of cheering fans. However, these measures were absolutely necessary to ensure that the sporting events were safe for the public health. Uh, could you please tell our viewers what some of the measures the authorities and organizers took uh, to ensure health and safety of the athletes and everyone involved in the Games? Well, uh, the excluding uh, uh, the spectators was the most essential part and a very hard decision to take. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, because of that, uh, we have a much uh, lower possibility of uh, contagion mm -hmm. and uh, the athletes can uh, simply concentrate on the games. And also the, all the technical uh, prevention measures are taken, being taken. Uh, so hopefully the, the athletes and the game uh, itself uh, shouldn't be affected uh, too seriously. Uh, I, I, we, we keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that the uh, Japanese people have been somewhat skeptical about the Olympic Games taking place this summer. One of the polls done by Japanese newspaper um, Asaki Shimbun, 83% uh, of the res survey respondents said they were against the uh, Olympic Games this summer. How do you think the attitudes have changed in Japan since the start of the, uh, the Games? Uh, well, uh, actually, op any opinion poll is only some, something approximate. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it only reflects the general tendency or mood. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, uh, since the game has been started, uh, I think uh, there could be somewhat different uh, sentiment among the population. Of course, the problem is still there. We are still in the middle of the pandemic, so we shouldn't be complacent. Uh, but uh, it's again, uh, as I said, a uh, balance between anxiety and uh, this uh, responsibility as a host. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, every Olympic Games have boosted tourism for the host countries and, and thus have helped grow the local economies. 
which will not be the case for Japan. What do you see as some of the silver linings or maybe payoffs of hosting the Olympic Games now? Well, uh, as you said, uh, unfortunately, extra revenue from tourism and visitors, uh, this is something uh, we, we'd better forget about this time. But still, uh, the, the Olympic Games uh, sh should have some uh, very special universal meaning, and not only for the host country, but the entire world. Uh, of course, the, the idea of International Olympic Games uh, could be in a turning point now, after more than a century. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the same time, we have so many technical means to carry on, uh, if necessary, without spectators. So this may, uh, le uh, this, this may leave some legacy for the future organization of the Games. It's still a kind of a trial and an error stage. Uh, but I hope uh, the experience in Japan uh, is uh, that well. It's not in in a vain, and it may uh, we can draw some some uh, lessons and something useful for the future. What have your personal most favorite moments and highlights been so far uh, in Tokyo 2020? Well, it's uh, difficult and still early. <laughs> We're still in the middle of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really, uh, I have uh, seen uh, many moving moments, mm -hmm. but uh, there'll be uh, some more. So let's look forward to the, the continued uh, kind of excitement. Well, we've all enjoyed the opening ceremony and looking forward to the closing ceremony. Um, now let's talk about for a moment about uh, Kazakhstan and Japan. Next year, the two countries will mark 30 years of establishing diplomatic ties. What do you see as some of the major milestones and achievements of the 30-year cooperation? Well, I'm so honored to, be, uh, to become a witness of this uh, very special uh, turning point. Well, 30 years means uh, a lot. It's already a big uh, chunk of history. And if it's a person's life, uh, it's a very special uh, moment of life. Mm -hmm. uh, already quite mature. Uh, a lot have been experienced, but still uh, so much is ahead. Uh, it's exactly li like uh, the, the, our two countries. But uh, I wish to add one more thing. Uh, being a diplomat, uh, having served in this uh, kind of job uh, for, for nearly four decades, I can uh, witness uh, that uh, there is some uh, very unique chemistry between Japan and Kazakhstan, uh, which is not uh, always the case in any combinations in the world. Uh, so we have to be grateful for this special quality and uh, preserve and even enhance uh, this uh, kind of special chemistry into the future. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, before the pandemic, the two countries have built strong, despite the distance, strong uh, trade ties. And obviously the pandemic has been a blow to international trade. Um, where do you see the Kazakh-Japanese relations, trade and economic relations stand at the moment? Well, uh, right now, because of the pandemic, uh, many things have been uh, stalled. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, we have a Japanese saying, uh, which uh, translates into like, uh, the, any challenge, any disaster uh, can be and should be turned into some blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, exactly the spirit we have to maintain right now. And uh, well, uh, maybe uh, given this uh, lesson of the importance of human health, mm. uh, you can find some new business opportunity mm. exactly in the field of uh, human health and uh, medical care. Uh, this is uh, something uh, very tangible lesson for all of us. And the same thing about the environmental protection and mm. other new issues. Mm. Uh, well, I think, uh, well, uh, our bilateral relations uh, don't exist in a vacuum. Uh, we, we exist in a, a much bigger global context. Mm -hmm. So the, after, after having uh, completed a very successful and uh, mutually benefiting 30 years, we will continue uh, further expanding our scope and uh, kind of uh, awareness something uh, beyond our immediate uh, bilateral relations, because uh, you have uh, the, your environment and uh, Japan has its own kind of uh, the wider context. 
So we will uh, jointly uh, search and try to identify kind of uh, our uh, common uh, role and responsibility in this wider global context. We could uh, be good uh, world citizens and we could uh, jointly offer something very positive and important to the rest of the world. Mr. Ambassador, how do you think the cultural ties have been affected then and academic exchanges especially? I think it's a question that many students are, or academics are concerned with. Uh, when do you think these relations will renew? Well, uh, prior to pandemic, uh, we had a very uh, fruitful exchanges. And uh, well, uh, as you know, uh, uh, President uh, Shigeo Katsu uh, of another university, he has been uh, here for over one decade, uh, embodying the academic excellence of this country. Uh, we are so proud uh, of him and uh, grateful to him for his service in, in, in Kazakhstan. Also, culturally, uh, well, uh, there are uh, typically, these, these are I think typical cases, but there are many films uh, uh, produced jointly mm -hmm. between our two countries. And, and, uh, our best known actors playing in a Kazakh movie uh, and, and vice versa. And uh, the, some of them are winning international prize. Uh, I really look forward to the continuation of this kind of uh, the, the very close collaboration. Uh, well, it doesn't matter in which area. Uh, the movie is also one typical example, but uh, for another example could be the dancing, ballet. Uh, we have uh, 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 rather many uh, Japanese uh, dancers who have been uh, active in, uh, in the Astana Opera already in nearly a decade. So the, this is thanks to, against, again, uh, thanks to our kind of the inherent chemistry mm -hmm. and the closeness. Uh, but uh, the, the, let's not take it uh, the, for granted and uh, further deepen and uh, kind of develop that uh, towards the future. Yeah. So returning to the topic of the pandemic, uh, with a population of 126 million people, Japan has had some of the lowest COVID-19 cases and the lowest death rate in the world has reported per population. Uh, what do you connect that with? How would you explain that? I, I hesitate to say that Japan's case as a success because there are many issues and anxieties and uh, the complaints among the Japanese population. Uh, so uh, l let's make some uh, ultimate conclusion a bit later. Uh, but uh, the, we all agree that uh, the vaccination, further the acceleration of uh, vaccinating people uh, is the, one of the top priorities now. And from that point of view, I think uh, Kazakhstan has been doing much better. You are one of the very few countries who developed your own uh, vaccine uh, in time for this uh, situation. Uh, while in Japan, I, I, I wish we could have done uh, the same, but uh, for some reason, uh, we haven't uh, succeeded that. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have to import and bring all the other vaccines to, to our population. Uh, but, but but Kazakhstan is in a, a much better position from that point of view, uh, and I think uh, also the pace of vaccination is uh, quicker here. Things are still ongoing, mm -hmm. and uh, as you see, the, in many countries of Asia, mm -hmm. up until last year, figures were comparatively lower. But now the, the, the scenes are changing, so the, it's not time to lower our guard. <laughs> but, but if uh, I may quote some some small elements. Mm -hmm. For, for, for example, wearing masks, this is something very familiar to Japanese people, unlike uh, the European people and uh, other places, because every winter, almost all the Japanese people wear masks. How so? It's a kind of a social or traditional convention. <laughs> so uh, we have much uh, smaller uh, resistance to wearing or carrying masks. Mm. And also the washing hands and uh, well, uh, the, the keeping the, the hygiene level uh, reasonably high is also something uh, socially established mm. in Japan. And this might have helped uh, to a certain extent. Uh, you've started talking about the vaccination uh, campaign and it is in full swing right now in Japan, it has been launched. Uh, around 27% of the population has received uh, two jabs of Pfizer vaccine 
And now uh, those who are above 65 uh, years of age are prioritized for inoculation. However, many say that the vaccination campaign has rolled out slightly uh, with, with its hurdles uh, in logistics and supply shortage as well, but also historical concerns over the side effects that caused many people to be hesitant about the inoculation in the past. Have the attitudes of the Japanese people changed to vaccines at the moment, and what are the attitudes now? Uh, well, uh, compared to other nations, uh, we had a much lower level of resistance to the vaccination in general, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, from the very small age, uh, we have several uh, compulsory vaccines for every child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, now I, I personally think that the merit of a vaccination far outweighs the, the small concerns or the, the, the side effects. Uh, but the, the, the important point is that we can never compel the whole population. It's ultimately it's up to the decision and the will of the, each individual. Uh, this will never change. So the, we shouldn't make it 100% compulsory or make any additional disadvantage uh, to the people who hesitate or refuse mm -hmm. to get vaccinated. This is a big difficult balance and, and it's exactly the same everywhere, uh, not, not only in Japan. It is indeed a difficult balance and Japan has really been praised for um, introducing restrictions or types of lockdown measures that were not too harsh on the businesses, that were not very restrictive. However, the numbers were still contained how do you think that was achieved? Well, I, I hesitate th th that we have achieved anything. <laughs> but uh, our approach was, uh, as you said, uh, rather soft, you see, mm -hmm. uh, rather close to uh, Swedish model. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not 100% uh, kind of uh, the, the compulsory mm -hmm. measures. We would rather suggest or ask, uh, or perhaps uh, plea, uh, the appeal to the people to conform. Uh, but but the, the problem is that the, there's some uh, clear limit to the patience of the people. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, it's uh, another question, how much longer we could uh, continue uh, in, in this kind of uh, soft approach? Uh, because in uh, many other parts of the world, uh, there have been more categorical, uh, very clear lockdowns. Uh, but the, the, again, the, the, their problem is that the, the, even the, the, the so rigid, uh, complete lock, lockdown uh, didn't solve the problem. And again, uh, if it's uh, so severe and harsh, you cannot uh, repeat it uh, endlessly. It's, it's so traumatic and damaging to the economy. So I think that the, more or less the emerging consensus is that uh, we, we cannot we, we really win the virus in the short term. It's a, uh, it's a long distance running kind of thing. And for, for, meanwhile, we have to find a way to coexist with this uh, the, the problematic virus. That, that, that's more or less the shared notion now. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they, we, we are not going to resort to the, so much uh, the categorical black and white measures. We have to find some middle way anyway. Yeah. If we are to learn to live or coexist uh, with the situation as is now. Um, and it, if the pandemic is here with us for a, a much longer time, that we can't actually predict uh, the end of it, when do you see travel between countries resuming? Yeah, again, it's a kind of a finding balance. Compared to the situation last year, I think the international flight uh, are operating uh, rather surprisingly uh, flexibly, mm -hmm. uh, not uh, return to the normal 100%, but uh, uh, we don't feel uh, this uh, kind of the, the isolation or uh, severed uh, from the outside world. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is uh, thanks to the enormous effort and the sacrifice from the airlines and all the stuff. Uh, but hopefully, I, I, well, uh, to, precisely because of uh, the, the necessity to coexist with the virus, uh, this minimum level of flexibility and movement, uh, I, I very much hope that it, it will still remain. And we'd better keep that kind of uh, uh, means and the possibilities. Uh, and of course, uh, the after we get out of this situation, I very much hope that uh, the international movement would uh, uh, revive uh, with some vengeance, vengeance and <laughs> with the so. extra energy because we are now accumulating some desire for 
kind of the, the new uh, new idea and the new new style of a new lifestyle uh, after pandemic. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Ambassador. So the closing ceremony is nearing. Um, uh, do you have any giveaways? Well, uh, well, again, uh, let's keep it <laughs> to the last <laughs> moment. It's a bit uh, early, and, and honestly speaking, uh, I don't have any anything concrete <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, I really hope that the, uh, our organizers and the whole country will manage to reach that stage, uh, hosting this uh, very important game. And uh, of course, uh, still in, we are in the middle of the world, and uh, uh, let's hope the rest of the game will the, the continue very safely and successfully, and giving many excitement and inspiration to the world. Well, thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much, and all the best for Kazakhstan, your people, and your team in now in Tokyo.